one wine glass of brandy, one or two pieces of lemon peel. Hi friends of Cocktails and history, it's time for another old versus new episode, where we take a look at how the making of cocktails has evolved through time. Today we'll make the Japanese cocktail, the way Jerry Thomas would make it 160 years ago, and the way we make cocktails today. Along with the famed Blue Blazer, this cocktail is one of the few recipes from the 1862 How to Mix Drinks, that are believed to be created by Jerry Thomas himself. Let's learn about it and make it. It's cocktail time! Despite the name, there is no Japanese ingredients in this cocktail. It's just brandy, orja, bitters and a lemon peel. With a formula of spirit, sugar, bitters and water, it fits the definition of a cocktail, or what we know as the old-fashioned today. According to cocktail historian David Fondridge, you want to go with a higher proof brandy, and this Pierre Front 1840 cognac sits at 45% ABV. It was specifically developed for the use in classic cocktails, so it's the perfect choice. I'll be using my homemade orja, but there are some pretty good store-bought options out there. Let me know if you'd like to see my recipe in a future episode. For the bitters, I'm using Bogart's bitters from the Bitter Truth, a recreation of a historic brand of bitters, originally created by Johann Gottlieb Booker in 1828 and produced until the 1920s. These bitters have been named Bogart's bitters in honor of Jerry Thomas's mistake. The recipes in the 1862 book call for Bogart's bitters but this was later changed to Bokers, for the updated versions like this 1887 Bartender's Guide. For the lemon, I'll follow the recipe and stir two pieces of lemon peel right in the cocktail. So why then is it called a Japanese cocktail? Best guess is that it was created for the visit of Japan's first diplomatic mission to the US in 1860. While in New York, they stayed close to Jerry Thomas's bar, and the youngest of the delegation, 17-year-old Tateishi Onojiro, was a darling of the American media, and the ladies. It is said he enjoyed Western customs, including cocktails, so it might just be that the professor made him this cocktail. As I show you how to make the original Japanese cocktail, you'll also be able to enjoy the hit song created for our young friend, the Tommy Polka. The recipe calls for this drink to be made in a small bar glass, which would represent a single old-fashioned glass. Grab that and add one tablespoonful of Vorja syrup. Next, bitters. Bogart's is thought to be the leading brand of bitters on the market during the time this cocktail was created. Have a teaspoonful of Bogart's bitters. Follow that with one wine glass of brandy. Pierre Ferrand actually consulted with David Fondridge when developing this cognac. One can imagine Tommy gave Jerry a Japanese knife. I'll use that to cut two pieces of lemon peel and add them into the glass. This will add essential oils into the drink as we stir and brighten up the cocktail. Add ice and stir. Jerry Thomas didn't add the garnish, so that's it. Before we try it though, let's look at how we would make a modern version. With the beautiful cherry blossom season in full swing in Japan, I could create a true Japanese inspired cocktail with Japanese ingredients. I might still do that. But today, I'll just place Jerry Thomas's recipe into the 21st century. Here's what I'll use. I'm still using homemade orja. Bitters will be Angostura aromatic bitters. And for brandy, I'll use another higher ABV cognac from Pierre Ferrand, 10 generations. It was created as a tribute to the 10 generations of the Ferrand family of cognac masters, represented on this beautiful bottle with a golden family tree. Oh, and a lemon twist for garnish. It will be a stirred cocktail and served in a chilled Nikanora glass. So get that in the freezer and let's make the Japanese cocktail, as we do. I'll start by chilling the mixing glass. So when we start stirring the cocktail, we're chilling the drink, not the mixing glass. Then add Angostura bitters, two dashes with the original bottle or four dashes with a Japanese style dasher bottle. Follow that with 15 ml or half an ounce of orja. Lastly, the spirit. 60 ml or 2 ounces of brandy, in our case, cognac. Add plenty of ice and stir to chill and dilute.
grab the chilled glass from the freezer and strain the cocktail. Instead of stirring the peel in the cocktail, we'll express the oils from a lemon peel over the top for some extra fragrance. Place the peel on the side of the glass and that's it. The Japanese cocktail two ways. Let's see how different they turned out. I'll start with the old. Even with the peels in the drink, instead of being placed on top, you still get a gentle citrusy aroma with some nuttiness. The 1840 cognac is the right choice to still make the spirit stand out from the sweet and nutty orja and the historic bitters. This is a pleasant sipper, but to be honest, doesn't look all that appealing. The modern version with a couple of dashes of angostura has a gentle pink hue. The citrus and nutty aroma is expected, but the bitters provide more of the aromatic notes than overall bitterness. 10 generations cognac adds beautifully fruity notes and really rounds out the whole cocktail. I have a feeling this would work great as a sour cocktail too. But if you've got the three ingredients needed to make this forgotten classic, I'd recommend you try it for yourself. I hope you enjoyed these not-so-Japanese Japanese cocktails. Did you know these cocktails before? Have you tried it yet? Let me know in the comments. I'll see you all soon with another cocktail creation. Cheers!